Welcome Umbraco lovers. Configuring your 404 and 500 pages are an essential part of any web project. However, when you're using Umbraco, there are a few extra twists and surprises that are worth knowing about. Now, some of the things you might want to think about are, should your error pages be static or should you build them in Umbraco? Is it better to configure things in settings or code? And should you use a content finder? Now, if these types of problems are giving you sleepless nights, then you should probably get a life outside of development because there's better things to think about. However, stick with me to delve into the nitty gritty of configuring error pages inside of Umbraco 13. Right, so we're gonna kick things off looking at the easiest to implement error handler, and that is the 500 page. So a 500 page is going to get thrown whenever an unhandled exception gets generated within your Umbraco website. So the first question you need to ask yourself is should this handler, should this page, should it be a static page or should you build it inside of Umbraco? And in order to answer this question, let's quickly jump to the whiteboard. So let's say we've got this page, it's been built in Umbraco and it's got a menu. Now the menu has a bug and it throws an exception and what will happen is that Umbraco will then load the 500 page. But let's say our 500 page has been built in Umbraco using the same menu. This is going to have the same bug which is then going to throw an exception. And then we end up with an infinite loop because we have a page that throws an exception that calls the 500 page that throws an exception. Then another 500 page is called and then we throw another exception and this carries on until IIS throws a stack overflow exception. And then this is where things start to get really bad for your website because you're going to be dealing with multiple site visitors at the same time. This means that IS is going to have to process multiple requests. However, if IS is constantly throwing too many stack overflows, then the whole server is going to shut down and nothing is going to work at all. And it's this exact reason why we always need to build a 500 page a static HTML. Because if you build it in Umbraco, you can get in a situation where your whole application dies and you won't have a nice way to fall back gracefully. So with that said, the next thing we need to do is create our page and then register it with Umbraco to always load that page if an unhandled exception is thrown. So with that said and done, I've jumped us over to my Umbraco 13 sample site and you can access this through the related tutorial linked to in the description below. So we need to add in our 500 page inside of WWRoot because everything in here is going to be available from the root domain. Now creating a 500 page, dead simple, create a page 500.html, call it whatever you want to. And then within here, you just need to put in all your static HTML. And this HTML will include everything to render out the header, the menu, the footer, the body content, as well as containing all the styles required to make the page look the way you want it to. Now, after you're happy with your template, the final step is to register your template with the pipeline. So what we want to do is tell your application to call this template whenever an unhandled exception is thrown. Now we do that inside of good old program.cs. Now I should probably point out, I have created a video on the best way to structure program.cs for Umbraco 13, which you can find in the related tutorial link in the description. But the key thing is that there's basically two parts here. So we've got the crate builder, which generates a web application builder. And then using this object, we can do build, which generates this web application object. And it's on this app object here that we need to register our 500 handler. So basically you just do an app dot use exception handler and you pass in the path to your 500 page. And because we added it in WW roots, we don't need to do any fancy routing here because we're going to get access to it on the root domain of our website. Now, after we've done this, if I launch my site, Whenever we generate an exception, and I've got a page here that should throw an exception that I've called throw error, you'll see that our 500 page should get called. And this is now configured to call this template whenever an unhandled exception gets called. The next type of error handler that we need to create is the classic 404 error handler page not found. So here, unlike the 500 template, 
we'll be generating everything inside of Umbraco because that makes sense because it means that we can use the shared layouts on our 404 pages, which is much better. Now, when it comes to implementing this handler, you basically have two options. Do you want to implement it in code or do you want to implement it in config? So I've jumped us inside the Umbraco backend and I'll quickly show you how I created the 404 page itself. Super simple. If you've been doing Umbraco for ages, there's nothing new here. So we go to settings, we go to document types, and then from here, we're going to create ourselves a new document type. So I did this document type with template. Now, let's say that I wanted to create a 404 page. If I try and put 404 here and save it, you'll see that I get an error because you can't start a document type with a number. It always has to be a letter. And this is the reason why I always call my 404 page not found template. Now, this template can contain whatever you need it to contain. You can see mine's just called not found template. And if I look in the actual view itself, then you can see there's nothing really here. It's just going to say not found template. Now, admittedly, that 404 page is very simplistic. In the real world, you'll likely be dealing with layouts. You should be creating controllers, model builder, all of that good stuff. But hopefully this should give you enough to highlight what you need to do. So with our simplistic template created, the next step is to actually create the 404 page. So we'll do this in the content tab. Now, if I get rid of my big head, the important thing to note here is I've created this 404 page. And if I go to properties, you can see the document type is not found template. And then another really key thing here is that we've got this ID and this GUID. And when it comes to setting up your 404 page, you're going to need to know one of these values. So make a note of them now. Nice. So we're making some good progress. And the next step is to basically register our page with the pipeline. So it gets called every single time a page not found exception is thrown. Now, a quick tip here is make sure that your 404 page loads without errors before attempting any type of config, because if you're trying to configure this and your page is broken, you'll probably waste hours wondering why things didn't work. So again, just make sure the page works first. And the first technique that we're going to look at involves making some changes with an app settings.json. So when you're ready, open up your solution explorer and app settings.json. And within here, you'll find an area that defines Umbraco related settings. Now, in order to configure the 404 handler, you're going to have to add in this error 404 collection. And you can see it lives within Umbraco CMS content error 404 collection. Now, when it comes to registering your 404 page with Umbraco, you're going to be adding in an entry inside of error 404 collection. Now, in order to register a specific 404 page, you're going to need to supply two bits of data. So the first bit of data is the culture. And for most people, you're just going to want to put default in here. And this means that your 404 handler is going to be registered for everything. Now, the second bit of data that you need to supply is a reference to the page in Umbraco that you want to use for your 404. Now, you can see here that I've got a content ID and the value that I'm adding here is 1068. And this value maps to the page ID in Umbraco. Now we do have a few other options here. And if you want to go in here, you can see we also have this content key. And if you do content key, instead of using the ID, you can use this long ass GUID. And for me, I find it much easier to make sure things are configured by ID, but whatever floats your boat. Now that configuration is probably going to be adequate for most watchers. However, there is another caveat to consider. Now, did you know it's also possible to register multiple 404 handlers for a single website in Umbraco? Now, you might be wondering, why would I ever need to do that? And the answer is pretty simple. Now, if you're creating a website that supports multiple cultures, multi-language, then you might want to create a 404 page per culture that you support. So let's say we've got French, German and English might have a 404 page in English, a 404 page in French, blah, blah, blah. And within the config we just looked at, it's also possible to register multiple handlers to deal with different cultures. So jumping back to config, let's quickly see how we can implement this. So if we look at our error 404 collection object now, probably makes a little bit more sense why it's in a way. So in order to create, say, a French specific 404 handler, 
all we need to do is in our culture define the french culture then we can define the content id we want to use for the french for a four page and then all we need to do is just carry on copying this config and registering the different cultures and the different pages until you have everything set up the way you want to and then as soon as you're happy with your setup if you just launch your site you can test everything out by just trying to visit a page that doesn't exist on your site and instead of seeing the generic umbraco.net error you should now see something a bit nicer you can see here not found template and this completely maps to my view that i've created here i've got my not found template view and all it says is not found template so this is the page which is loading here right so that covers how to set up your 404 handler using config now my personal preference is to do exactly the same thing however we can do it using a content finder in code so luckily understanding and implementing content finders is pretty simple so whenever you're dealing with an umbraco website you're going to be dealing with incoming urls now these urls they're going to go via your web server so let's say it's is and then you'll need a way basically to map a url to an umbraco page now obviously the complicated thing in a cms is that an umbraco page lives within a database so we need some sort of code to map a url to a page in umbraco and then that's going to return the content so then we can actually render our final output and this type of lookup from url to umbraco database is done by a content finder now it's possible for you to create your own custom finders and one in particular is really useful for 404s and it's the last chance provider so the way the last chance finder works is that while the pipeline is trying to map a url to a page if nothing maps this last chance finder will be called last and in here we can basically implement our 404 logic and this is then going to call our 404 page assuming no url to umbraco pages have been mapped now implementing a custom content finder in code is pretty simple and there's basically two bits of code you need to write so you're going to need to write the actual content finder itself so creating a class that calls the 404 page the second bit of code that you need to write is basically some registration code so you'll need to write some code that tells umbraco to register your custom content finder when your application starts and we do that using a composer so jumping us back into visual studio you'll see in my website files i've got this file which is called register and braco components and i've put it inside this composer folder now obviously you're free to name this and put it wherever you need to now when we look in this the important thing here is that i'm implementing from this i composer which comes from umbraco cms called composing i composer now again we can name this whatever we want to name it you can add in multiple bits of code in here if you want to but when you implement this interface you're going to have to implement this method which is public void compose i umbraco builder and this is going to give you access to this builder object now within the builder object you can see i've got this set content last chance finder and i'm passing in this custom type here so this is the class that we're going to create next and it's the page not found content finder so one thing that can confuse people here is that this is the only bit of config you need to do and basically what happens is that when your application starts umbraco uses reflection to find any classes that implement i compose anything that it finds it will automatically register everything inside that compose method so you don't need to add any other configuration just add this class and your code will work so again jumping us back to visual studio you can see that within my solution explorer i've created a second folder content finder and this is where i've added my class so page not found content finder and the pattern that i use here is the same as the i composer where we have to implement from a specific umbraco interface this time round, it's the i content last chance finder now when you implement from this interface you're going to have to create this try find content i published request request method and it's within this method you're going to add in your 404 logic and basically what we want to do here is query umbraco to get information about the 404 page and then set it to the published context and in order to query umbraco we can use the umbraco helper in this instance i'm using the i umbraco context accessor and this is where i'm doing umbraco context accessor get 
required on Braco context. And I'm basically querying the front end and Braco cache. And you can see here I'm doing get by ID and I'm passing in 1068. Remember, this is the page ID that we looked at previously. After I've got my Umbraco page here, you can see I'm doing request set is 404 request and I'm doing my set publish content to my Umbraco page. And then finally, I'm doing return task from result equals true because we've got a match and doing all of this is going to allow our 404 page to load. Now, if you're sat there wondering, I wonder what approach John would use. Personally, I would use a content finder. However, the only change to what I've shown you is that I would put the content ID in an app setting rather than hard code it in source control, just so I could update it easier in the future. But I said, both approaches work. Do what makes you happy. Now, if you are a big fan of Umbraco and you want to learn more about it, then don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Do not be a numb nuts. I release a video every Sunday, loads and loads of stuff on Umbraco. So check out the channel. Additionally, if you do want to become an Umbraco ninja as well as support this channel, I've created a book called Umbraco.net Core Mastery over on Lean Pub, and the link is in the description. This book is relevant for Umbraco 13 and will teach you how to build a .NET Core based website using Umbraco. And finally, if you're just more interested in learning what's new in Umbraco 13, there's a link on the screen right now, which gives you my Umbraco 13 tour. There's a bunch of really cool stuff there, so I recommend you check that out. Aside from that, we've reached the end and until next Sunday, happy coding.